A golf architect is often a master of deception. Their job is to tease and tempt, trick, and occasionally treat. Things are rarely what they seem to be. That, more than anything, is the story of Bobby Weed and his family, where what you see is far from what you get. Weed has long been referred to as Pete and Alice Dye's third son. The Dyes left an indelible mark on modern golf course architecture, pushing limits, moving earth, and narrowing fairways as they built double diamonds and island greens. As great a legacy as Pete and Alice left with phenomenal golf courses, there's an equal legacy on who they impacted and, and what they left behind. Weed, as a young 20-something, started working for Pete and Alice in the 1970s, which led to a job at the PGA Tour's new stadium course at Sawgrass. We needed somebody like Bobby Weed, and we hired him to be the golf course superintendent here, and that's when he and Pete uh, became almost brothers. Weed spent most of his career working for both the Dyes and the Tour, listening and learning, tweaking and shaping. Bobby he worked pretty hard, a very talented guy. He had that feeling for building a golf course and making it playable for the average player, but also challenging for the best players in the world. While making Ponte Vedra his home, this is where Weed would meet his co-designer of life. Our first date was a blind date playing golf. You could tell everything about a person in a game of golf. She hit one off in the rough over in the oak trees, and I just sat in the cart, and she walked over there kind of stalling, waiting for me to say, just pick it up and move it out here. And I didn't do that. I'm like, you hit it in there, you gotta hit it out. She just became the apple of my eye. But next thing you know, we got married about a year later, and we started having children. We ended up with three beautiful daughters. I call them a sleeve of girls. <laughs> While Leslie focused on the kids, Bobby was busy building out the tour's TPC network of golf courses. It's tough working in this business and being gone and being on the road. You know, my office truly is in the field where I work. Coming home is a bonus. Bobby and Leslie Weed's delicate balance of building a business and raising a family had its challenges, but none like what they'd face when Lanier, their youngest daughter, was diagnosed with nonverbal autism. When she was born, she was perfect. She had 10 on the APGAR, she was hitting all of her milestones, and then at 18 months, she just started backsliding. I lost the ability to talk and lost the ability to walk. It was like going to your electric box and just slowly everything, she lost everything. Our third daughter was diagnosed with autism, profoundly autistic, nonverbal. And boy, that really, that really changed her life. She couldn't be in the room with three people. I couldn't take her to a grocery store. I couldn't take her out of the house without just a complete meltdown. I would cry every day. I would get my kids off to school and I'd get in the shower and cry really hard. And then I was fine. If I didn't, it would just be on top of me all day long. We were deeply in crisis mode, very because my other children are affected too. This family fivesome was forced to scramble. Bobby and I sat him down. Bobby said, you know, when you play soccer, you don't like being on the bench, right? And they're like, Lanier's on the bench and we are team weed and we're all gonna be here for her. Family time is very special. With what Leslie and I have had to overcome, we become a very strong team together. This was so far beyond the lessons learned in the field or golf's greatest predicaments. This was a reality no family is ever prepared for, and Leslie took it upon herself to become an expert in autism. I remember going to dinner with Bobby and going, I gotta start a foundation. I gotta help all these families, because I figured it out. I've seen a side of her that I didn't know existed on the very front end. What she has done, talk about getting in the trenches, just diving in with both feet. She, she has done that and more. We started HEAL, helping enrich autistic lives. 
Today, we've raised over $5 million. We have 15 camps in the summers with 350 teens, children, and adults in these camps. It gives parents respite. Kids learn to surf. We have them in the art museums, and we have music programs, and we have sports leagues. Immersed in the autistic world provided the weeds access to other experts and opportunities. And in 2013, there was a breakthrough. A therapy known as facilitated communications had come online. It's a technique that involves a facilitator physically supporting the hand, wrist, or arm of an autistic person while the person spells out words on an iPad or similar device. Lanier was all in. When Lanier started typing on the iPad, the first thing she typed was, thank you for releasing my voice. First thing she typed? Yes. It took about 30 minutes. She would type two letters and run around, go around the room trying to find the next letter because she had to form the words and then, you know, the eye-hand control because she'd never typed, but she had everything in her head. And the second thing she typed was, tell my mom I love her. Tell my dad he's my hero. When she told me about Lanier typing and what she said, I literally dropped to my knees. We sobbed on the phone for 20 minutes without saying a word. Because then you're like, she's been trapped all these years. Oh my gosh. And yeah, she did. She said, you know, jailed my entire life. She said jailed my entire, entire life. life. When she told me what Lanier had typed, I can honestly say it took me upwards of two years before I could ever say that without crying. After 14 years of silence and frustration, with the tip of her incredibly articulate finger, Lanier was finally free to speak her mind. I asked her once, I said, Lanier, did you think back that one day you might be able to communicate? And she said, Mom, you started heal. You had hope and that gave me hope. In June of 2016, Lanier Weed took her voice on the road and on stage at the Autism Conference in Illinois. She typed in front of doctors and therapists and parents. One of the questions was, what do you say to people who doubt your intelligence? And she wrote, you don't have intelligence if you take precious time taking dignity away from people you've misread. Bobby Weed is a wildly successful architect. So this is the landing area out here, Matt, and then you got this little shot across. He's worked for the tour, the dies, and has his own portfolio, which includes Grove 23, Michael Jordan's personal playground. <laughs> Leslie Weed has raised three daughters and over $5 million for HEAL, helping enrich autistic lives. And then there's Lanier, who's making her mark one letter at a time. Well, she's made our entire family stronger in so many ways. We asked her what her goals were. She said, I want to change the world. 